Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So today for our new lesson, we're going to be dealing with this concept called expressionism. And what expressionism is all about is the artist essentially trying to create an emotional experience rather than a realistic experience. And what I mean by that is that when an artist might be creating a painting of a scene, yes, they may be looking at that scene and they may be inspired by what they see, but what they're not trying to do is copy the, copy the scene exactly if they're expressionist. What they're trying to do is create what their emotional experience of that ex of that scene is. So what they are feeling as a result of looking at it, instead of trying to make it look like a photograph. So what we're gonna be dealing with at this lesson is gonna be a self-portrait. Now with the self-portrait, we did practice on the last lesson working with uh, learning the facial, uh, how to draw facial features and how, how having to draw facial proportion lines in the face, center line, eye line, nose line, mouth line. Um, and so you're going to be building upon those skills and trying to develop more of a realistic style of drawing as a result. Um, now, just realize that because this is expressionism, it doesn't have to be photorealistic, though. So if your skills aren't at a point to where you can create something that really looks like a photo of you, it's OK if it's a little bit exaggerated. So feel free to exaggerate those facial expressions and those features that make you look like you because it'll only make the piece look better. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to switch to my other view and I'm going to be pointing downwards at a blank sheet of paper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look in the mirror that's right across from me and I'm going to start to draw myself uh, from what I see in the mirror.
All right, so welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. In this uh, second portion here, I'm going to be showing you how to go about turning your portrait into an expressionistic self-portrait. Um, so already I've kind of gone in the direction of expressionism through the actual expression itself. It's got a sense of kind of a little bit of curiosity, a little bit of suspicion, and a little bit of amusement is the way that I would put it. Um, now, I did that through the expression of the face, but you can also th do it through exaggeration of facial features, or you could do it through the use of color. So for me, because I was wanting to really show you how to draw a face realistically, I wanted to kind of shoot more in that direction. However, when it comes to the use of color, that way, in that direction, I'm going to go a little bit more extreme. So go ahead and kind of dump out your box of crayons or part of your box of crayons and try to figure out some colors that you want to use for the brightest areas and then for the darkest areas and then for the areas in between. And feel free to make it have, well, not a sense of logic. So looking through my selection over here, um, I've got some bright yellow and I've got some orange. I've got some bright pink. I got some flesh tone, but I don't think I want to really use the flesh tone. Um, let's see, let me dig through my box and see what else I've got in the box. Ooh, we got some really pale yellow. Let's pull that out too. And let me see, anything else looks helpful? Ooh, how about this pale green? That's a good one. All right, so I got some good oddball colors to use here. Now, to me, when I squint my eyes, the darkest of these are these two over here. And I think it's, yeah, I think it's kind of like from lightest to darkest, going like this. And what I say, meant by squint my eyes is if you squint your eyes, so you're looking through your eyelashes, that allows you to kind of look at the lightness or darkness more relative to each other without actually really paying much attention to the, to the uh, color itself. In fact, I'm almost wondering if that one belongs there. No. All right, now, going ahead and picking out some darker ones. All right, so we got this dark brown right here, but how about picking something more invigorating? How about a dark blue-green? How about a dark blue? How about a dark violet? Um, kind of a dark blue-violet. Yeah, these look like some good options. I'm going to get rid of that brown. That's boring. All right, so let's begin. I'm going to start out in my darker areas. So, let's see. For the nose, let's pick the brightest color, yellow. Now this is going to go real fun when I have that yellow start to touch the blue though because what do you get when you mix yellow and blue? Well, you get green. So that's going to be interesting, huh? Let's even use this yellow green here in the areas where they start to touch. Yeah, that brightened that up and kind of brought it out of the shadow a little bit more. Whew. Not sure if I like it or not yet, but it's something. <laughs> it's awfully vivid. 